Hi, I'm Antonio Lopiano, and I am the Digital Humanities Program Specialist here in the O'Neill Library as part of the Digital Scholarship Group. And today I'm going to be talking about project planning, specifically when one is planning a digital project. So there's three main areas you're going to want to consider when you're planning a digital project. The first, and perhaps most obviously, is your research question. So what do you want to study? What do you want to understand about the subject you're studying? And why will that be important for both other scholars and possibly even for the public at large? The second main area is going to be what sources are available to you in order to address that question. And third is going to be how will you address that question? What methodologies are you going to be employing? Uh, what theoretical approaches are you going to be taking in the study of your subject area? And when planning a digital project, this has the special consideration of what sorts of technologies are you going to be using um, and what access do you have to those technologies as part of the Boston College system. So the first area that we've mentioned is the research question itself. Uh, and that question will actually have three components in and of itself. Uh, the first is, what is the subject that you're studying? Uh, the second is, what are you hoping to get out of that subject? And the third is, why will that subject be important for your field and for the public at large? So for instance, I might say that I am studying trade in the uh, British Imperial Caribbean. And then I might say that I'm studying that because I want to understand the impact that the American Revolutionary War had on the trade coming out of the Caribbean. And then third, I might say that and I'm studying that and so that the public and so other scholars might better understand how the American Revolutionary War impacted daily life in the Caribbean. Um, the research question uh, will start off rather broad, probably, as all research questions do. But you'll want to take some time to further refine the question to ensure that the scope uh, is both specific and achievable within the time frame that you have available to you. In order to do this, you might want to consider refining both the chronological subject and the thematic subject uh, of your research question. For instance, I might say that I am studying uh, trade coming out of the Caribbean in the two decades immediately following the American Revolutionary War. Uh, and I might say that I'm looking at trade in three specific crops or maybe trade coming out of one specific island. And this will help me both identify the specific sources that will be most relevant to my subject and also ensure that I'm not trying to tackle a project that's just way too large to be accomplished within the time frame that I have and isn't going to chew up you know, a decade of my life or more. Uh, so moving on to the second main area that we mentioned at the beginning, uh, we'll want to think about what sources we have available to us uh, to address this question. So I might want to look for things like uh, trade logs, um, journals, and that sort of thing. Uh, primary sources that will have information relevant to my subject. In order to discover these, I'll probably start with secondary research that's already been published. Hopefully not on the specific research question that I'm asking, but you know, in the area, uh, in the larger field that I'm researching. Uh, and those secondary sources are going to have footnotes, works cited, and bibliographies that will be able to point you to the primary sources most relevant to both the period, the time period, uh, and to the geographic region and subject matter that you're studying. Um, and then once you've identified what those sources will be, you have the task of uh, identifying where those sources actually are. Uh, so you might be able to find those uh, already published if some other researcher was kind enough to uh, compile them and publish them. Um, but they might still be only in the original format. That is to say, still in whatever uh, handwritten logs or journal entries they were originally composed in. Uh, in that instance, you'll need to find out what archives house them. Um, if those archives have already produced a digital version of them, that's great. Um, how can you access those digital versions? Or if you'll need to either physically travel to those archives or have someone else digitize those archives or portions of those archives for you. Um, and this is really where you'll want to lean on your library resources. Um, there's a lot of great uh, librarians. Uh, liaisons within the library that can help you track down these sources. Uh, and then um, departments like the Interlibrary Loan Department can help you actually access those sources. Um, and will help you figure out in the Digital Scholarship Department how to digitize those sources, how to then take those sources from a digital format and employ them in your project. Which neatly brings us to our third area, which is what methodologies are you going to be employing 
to best answer this question and make sure that it has long-term sustainability. Uh, so once you have your digitized sources, you'll need to figure out what programs, what softwares, what digital platforms are going to be most useful uh, for your attempts to analyze, visualize, and eventually publish your project and your data. Uh, for instance, with this question, uh, trade has an inherently spatial aspect to it, right? Goods are always moving from some location to another location. So we might want to make some maps to visualize that. Uh, here in the library, we have some very advanced mapping softwares known as Geographic Information Systems, or GIS for short. Um, and we have both the hardware and software resources here in the library, but we also have experts that can help you use those softwares and even download them onto your own computer. Um, Trade also has a lot of statistical analysis available to it. So you might want to employ some sort of data visualization software. Uh, for instance, here in the library, we have a very uh, powerful software called Tableau. We have licenses available for Tableau, and Tableau can produce really uh, aesthetically pleasing charts and graphs that are also uh, flexible and dynamic in a way that allows you to generate a lot of useful information from them, and also to produce interactive visualizations in the form of dashboards and data stories that you can either embed in a larger website or even use as the structure of a website itself. Uh, so with these two softwares in mind, you can tackle your project and, and produce a lot of visualizations, both immediately for a research paper in terms of static you know, figures and uh, images, but also dynamic and interactive visualizations that you might want to incorporate into a digital publication. Once you've figured out what you want to include in your digital publication, you also have to uh, ensure that you're going to have long-term sustainability for your project in whatever form you choose to publish it, either as uh, an independent website um, or as part of a larger digital project. So you need to think about where it's going to live, what servers it's going to live on, who owns those servers, uh, what platforms uh, those servers will be using to deliver your data and your publications, uh, and how you're going to ensure that those links that you've included in your project, those uh, interactive platforms you've included in your project are going to remain active uh, throughout the life cycle of your project. Uh, now, it's impossible to ensure complete and total permanent stability in the, in the modern digital age on the internet. But uh, with some careful planning, you can ensure that your projects will uh, live on for a decade or more, um, and uh, hopefully in a way that is sustainable both in terms of their longevity, but also in the amount of effort it'll take for you to maintain that longevity. Um, you know. So hopefully you'll come up with uh, some ways, including uh, the use of GitHub, um, or also um, by uh, asking the Digital Scholarship Group how uh, they might in help you ensure that these projects live on for a long time um, uh, without too much manual input uh, on your end.